In this tutorial, we're going to take a look at how we can go about mapping the knobs and faders on our external controller to third party VSTs within Studio One. Now this tutorial presupposes that you've already set up your external controller. I have a older tutorial on that, but should, it's still relevant. You can click on the link up above if you need to set up your external controller the, to map the knobs and faders in Studio One. But really quickly, if we come to the mix console and show the external devices panel, you can double click, find your external controller, double click on it. You should have a window similar to this. And then you would click on, you'll have a button for MIDI mapping or MIDI learn. Click that, start turning the knobs and faders on your controller. Those will then populate into the, your, you'll have an empty window, but the knobs and faders will start to populate. You can save that and then you'll have those mapped. Let's close out that external panel. Now the mapping in Studio One, there's two different versions. There's global mapping and focus mapping. And before we get to the third party, just know that the global mapping is going to apply to things like the fader and pan uh, controls on the channels here. So this first channel is in focus. So if I were to turn a knob on my controller in the parameter display up above, we can see as I turn knobs, this updates to show which one that I've done. If I click on the fader here, you can see volume is populated. I can then click on this triangle to connect those. And now that first knob on my controller is controlling this channel fader. And this is a global control. So it's gonna maintain a one-to-one -one relationship with this fader. And we know it's a global control because it's in blue. So this is in focus, but if I were to come here, I cannot then assign that first knob to this one as well, and then switch back to this one and have it control this. I'd have to choose a separate discrete knob to assign to the second one. So if I turn knob two, click on the fader, join these, then that adjusts that. And I don't even have to select this other one because knob one's still gonna control that. Anytime you'd like to change a connection or break it rather to disconnect it, just click on the triangle there. And then as I turn the pot two on my controller, that's no longer adjusting the fader. Now let's move on to third party and we'll start with reactor here. And this is, is a pretty simple process for most VSTs, I believe. So if we had, I'd like to map the waveform parameter, I would just click on that and we can see in the parameter display, the uh, name has been populated in the first field here. If I'd like to assign that to knob one, then I can turn that. We can see that that changes to knob one. We can click on the triangle and you notice that this one is yellow, noticing, letting you know that you're in focus mapping. And you also need to be sure that this focus device is yellow. So now when I turn that first knob, I am controlling the waveform parameter in form. Let's move on to another VST here. So I have bit. If I'd like to adjust the symmetry, just notice in the parameter display, once I click that, that's updated. I'll use knob two for this. I turn that, we can see knob two. I'll click the triangle. And now I'm controlling the symmetry. And if we come back to the form, just notice that when I turn knob one, we are adjusting the uh, waveform parameter, but the fader is not being moved because the focus mapping is going to override that global mapping. But as soon as I, if I turn the focus off, notice that the global mapping takes over and the fader is being adjusted. If I turn this back on, then we come back to the waveform. I could also, when we close out the VST, the control goes back to the fader as well. Now with some VSTs, you're gonna have a couple extra steps. So if I open up the battery here, when I click on the filter here, this parameter, notice that this doesn't change in the parameter display. So if I right click on this and choose enable host automation, notice that it now is displayed in up at the top here. So if I want to assign that to knob one, I can then click and this is now connected. Let's go ahead and take that off and close out battery. This is going to be the same within Falcon. So if I bring this up and I'd like to assign the knob to the wave index parameter, 
we can see when I click on this, it doesn't update here. So I need to right click and come to assign host automation. I'm gonna choose host automation one. Once I do that, the field actually did not change here, but that is assigned. So let's go ahead and, okay, just turn it. We can, we need to actually turn it within Falcon. We can't just click on it, but we can see that that's populated now. So again, clicking on the triangle, I now have control over the wave index. Now these settings are going to be saved, these, these mappings. So let's map this one again, the symmetry. So even if you work on a different song, then this is gonna be retained. So if we close that out, let's come to the start, create a new song. I'll just save this to the desktop, okay. And let's bring in the bit. I'll turn the knob one and we can see that symmetry is being controlled in our new song as well. So that setting has been saved. We can also make these mappings within the VST window itself. So we have a gear icon there, if we click on that, then we have the same displays as above. So if I were to click on the feed, we can see that that populates there. I'll turn knob two, notice that that changes and it's been joined or immediately. Uh, coming to the amount that's then populated, I'll turn knob three and let's connect that. And we're adjusting the amount. So just another error that you can use to make these connections. And the last thing I'll mention is that we have a couple of different modes here. So if we come to my tie, which is included in Studio One, when we click on the down arrow in our parameter display, we have recently touched. So that when this is activated, anything that we touch for the included VSTs or third party is going to display in the window as we have seen. Now with the included VSTs, if we select mouse over, then it's gonna populate automatically as soon as you hover over, if you'd prefer to use this with the included VSTs. But I'm going to turn that feature off. And you can see we also have recent parameters that we've clicked on or adjusted. And of course this mapping can be done with effects as well. So let's close the mix console and open up the browser come to our effects. Let's put a spark verb on that form track. So if I were to click on the size, we can see room size is populated here. I'll turn knob one. Let's join those. And now I can control the size on the spark verb. All right, so this is how you can go about mapping your knobs and faders on your external controller to third party VSTs in Studio One. I hope this has been helpful and I'll see you in the next tutorial.